Good morning, everybody. Thank you for, uh, for coming to this session. I, when I learned that I was going to be having this session during the keynote, I figured I'd be talking to like two or three people. So I'm very excited that we have sort of a full house here. Um, this is going to be kind of a non-technical discussion. It's more so just uh, giving you all an idea of what the sandbox is and, and how it could help you in your development and get your hands on some Cisco technology. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is what we're going to go over today. We're going to talk a little bit about the developer experience. We're going to go in and talk about what exactly is the DevNet sandbox and how it can benefit you. We're going to go and, and look at a couple of different lab models that we have. Uh, it's important to understand you know, what your best choice is for what you're trying to do, uh, what type of lab to choose. Then we're going to go through a demo. I'm actually going to go in and drive a sandbox and show you, show you around how you can interact with all the devices. Um, then we're going to talk about the possibility of you all using Sandbox Labs for your own events. Um, so if you're hosting a hackathon or a class, you'll be able to bulk reserve some labs for there. So we'll go into that. Um, and then we'll go into questions and discussions. Before we get started uh, in the talk about Sandbox, I want to make sure I build a little bit of context. So this whole half of this ballroom here is DevNet. And DevNet sort of broken out into these areas that DevNet covers. So if you aren't familiar, DevNet is Cisco's developer program. And so we're trying to make it as easy as possible for developers to do all of the things that developers need to do, to code, to build, to get information. So let's just go through this real quick. So the first thing is just learning. Uh, how do I find out about the technology and the APIs? We have learning labs, so you can fill in some knowledge deficits or learn about something new. You can go code and try things in the sandbox. That's what we're going to talk about here today. Inspire, once you have something built and you want to showcase it or you want to see what other people have built, uh, you can do that as well. So there's the DevNet creations, co-creations. There's a whole section along this back wall over here people have built um, and then connect so it's gonna be communities uh, online forums where you can go and ask questions and get guidance and then there's uh, we have a continuous series of events such as these Cisco lives hackathons and stuff like that so what we cover at DevNet is pretty all-encompassing I'm gonna focus on the sandbox here you can go learn about the rest of this throughout the rest of the uh, the, the, the the demo areas out here so what do we think the developer experience is? This is how we define it within DevNet. It's the sum of all interactions, both good and bad, between a developer and a library, a tool, or an API. So that's a pretty broad statement. We are trying to take the responsibility for making sure the developers have what they need so that we have a lot more positive experiences than negatives. So developers could come in and, and face certain challenges. So I just have up here six questions that a developer may have um, and what we're doing to address those. So, okay, I'm a developer and I just learned about a new API or a new technology. So is that something that's interesting to me? Do I want to use it? We have lots of information about all of the technologies uh, within Cisco and you can go and get very detailed information. You can go get the API reference, you can go get code samples, you can take 101 uh, type, uh, watch 101 type videos, that sort of thing. So it just gives you an idea, do I want to use this particular technology? All right, so if you decide, all right, this is something I'm interested in, how do I, how do I learn about it? How do I get started? So this is where we have the learning opportunities. And we have learning tracks, uh, which is kind of a front end to the learning labs. So the learning labs, they're available all the time, not just here at the show. And they're small, bite-sized, self-paced uh, courses that you can take. So there's Python 101. There's uh, you know, APIC 101. How do you make your first REST API call? Um, all the way up into to much more advanced things. So if you have a knowledge deficit, you're like, I don't really know about this. Or if you're starting something new, you can go and look at the learning labs uh, and take a learning track and really get up to speed very quickly. 
So we're going to talk about this, the Sandbox Labs, this, this presentation. How do you try it? How do I get my hands on the technology? How do I use it? I had mentioned before that we have lots of documentation and lots of code samples. Uh, you know, as a developer, the first thing you want to do is you're like, all right, I'm ready. I'm at a command prompt. Oh my gosh, how do I get started? It's so much better if you can pull in a code sample, make it run, and then just sort of build from there. So we try to give you lots of good places to start. I had mentioned this before, community and support. Uh, we have lots of forums. You can go and ask questions, um, whether they're very technology specific or just a very general sort of DevNet question. And then, all right, if I have a, uh, a product that I want to go to market with, uh, we have the uh, partner program that will help you get to market with your, uh, uh, with your uh, development. All right, so now we're going to dive into and talk about what is the sandbox. So it's our goal within DevNet to get developers to their first hello world within 15 minutes. That's really aggressive. With some technologies we can get there, some are a little bit harder, but that's our goal, to get you to your first hello world in 15 minutes. You're in a world of trouble if the first step is, I got to have a lab, I got to have equipment. There's a whole bunch of issues, painful issues for the developer about, about getting their hands on equipment. If you have to build it yourself, you have to figure out what you need. You have to go make a plea to somebody for money. You have to go order it. You have to get it in. You have to rack it and stack it. You have to configure it. And that is painful and probably weeks, and if not months, to get all that stuff in place. What we want to do is be a first step, hey, I don't even know if I want to use this yet. Let me go play with it first. Then, if this is really what I want and I need more than what Sandbox offers, then I can go make that plea for money. You can go and show your boss a proof of concept. This is what I want to do. Do that in the Sandbox. Then the people who you're making requests of, you can go to them and say, this is what I want to build and I need to go get these things in-house. Whatever your scenario is. But we want to get you past that first step of, how do I get my hands on it? So the solution is Sandbox Labs. So this is just the first part of our, uh, our newly updated Sandbox web page. All right, so I want to emphasize Sandbox is built specifically for developers. Um, that is our goal. It's not for the sales force. It's for developers to get in and try things. And you'll see some of, the, some of the advantages. I'll go over here in a minute, and you'll see how we've tried to build things uh, to be very developer focused. Now you'll notice I have an asterisk after developers. I talk to a lot of people you know, at this show or, or when we're out doing hackathons or whatever, and they'll say, well, I'm not really a developer. I'm, a, I'm a, an architect or um, you know, I, I'm just a networking guy. Our, our definition of a dev developer is really, really broad. So a developer is really an engineer, a developer, admins, anybody else who wants to get their hands and test uh, against Cisco APIs, controllers, network gear, whatever. So you could be a university student. You could be, uh, like I said, a, a network architect. You're all, within our definition of developer, everybody fits in there. All right, what can you do in the sandbox? So the sandbox is open 24-7. Um, everything's self-serve. You don't have to call anybody or request anything. It's just you go online and you just can do it all yourself. So you have access to a variety of labs. Um, you can choose from virtualized environments. Uh, a good portion of our labs have actual hardware in them, so you can choose those as well. Um, and we're going to go into the difference between the reservation and the always-on here in just a second. All right, so before we go any further, you're thinking, how much is it going to cost me to get there? Nothing. It is free. Everything within Sandbox right now is free. Everything within DevNet, everything you'll see out here, get your hands on these resources, it's free. Okay? So don't be thinking, uh, I don't know if I can do this or not. All right, this is just a, a quick overview of the different lab technologies that we, we cover. So it's a really wide the wide breadth of Cisco technology. So if you are wanting to learn about something, come and take a look. It's a good chance we'll have something exactly what you want or close. 
I'm just going to leave this up here. And th so this is just an example of some of the lab environments that we have. And this is not a comprehensive list. Right now, I think we are at 44 different labs. OK, so let's talk a little bit about the lab models. We had talked about an always-on lab versus a reservation-based lab. So an always-on lab is for if you just want to try something out really quick. Hey, I just want to go make a couple API calls and see what happens. So an always-on lab is typically just a system we have put uh, on the internet with a public IP address. And so you can instantly, you go into one of our labs and all the information is there. You can go and click a URL and you are at uh, the console for you know an APIC controller or whatever it is. Um, so instant access, you don't need a reservation. It's always on, and you can make API calls directly from there. Now it's typically going to be the technologies where you're just making restful API calls. It is a shared environment, so other people could be using it at the same time. But those technologies are going to be the technologies where it doesn't matter. You're just making restful API calls. You're not going to know that five other people are, are hitting the server at the same time. So again, this is for very quick. Maybe you've taken a learning lab, and you're like, uh, OK, I've, I've, they showed me how I could make some API calls. I just want to go do a couple myself. Um, very quick, very easy to get going. All right, the next lab model we have is what we call the reservation-based lab. And this is uh, for a little bit more serious person. They're wanting to invest some time. Uh, this is by far our most uh, popular lab model. So this gets you a private environment. You go and make a reservation. We're going to spin up uh, an environment on a VLAN, and you are going to have exclusive access to that VLAN. Now, you can share it. Uh, you can do session sharing. When you make your reservation, if you have a colleague you want to be able to access that environment as well, you can put your colleague's name uh, in the list and you can share it. But by default, it's just you. You will have administrative access to all the devices in these labs. So you, can, you basically can do anything you want to in there. We have a lot of in-lab uh, tools. Um, I had talked about before about the things that we do for developers. Um, we allow you to make reservations uh, for up to seven days in here. Because a lot of times you can't get things done in one or two hours. If you're going to go in and uh, you know, do some heavy duty configuration, it takes you a couple hours just to get something configured. Uh, you know, a two hour reservation is not going to cut it. So by yourself, you can go in there and make a reservation for up to a week at a time. So some of the disadvantages requires a reservation. You just have to go through a couple of menus to say when you want your reservation to start, how long you want it to be. You, you can get through that process in under a minute. Um, once your reservation starts, what we're going to do is we're going to go and provision your lab. If there's any VMs, we're going to go spin those up. We're going to run some tests to make sure everything came up correctly. Um, and then we're going to email you VPN credentials. So once you have those VPN credentials, you VPN to the lab. And so whatever system you're working on, your laptop or whatever, is directly connected to the devices in your private lab. Um, most of the labs come up in the 5 to 10 minute time frame. A couple of the technologies themselves just take a long time to come up. So like APIC. It's a beast of a machine, and it's going to take about 30 minutes before that machine comes up and all services are available. But like I said, most of them are in the 5 to 10 minute range. You can schedule reservations in the future. If you're like, all right, I know I have a no meeting day next Tuesday. I'm going to set my reservation and have it available all day Tuesday. You can do that. The default is, hey, start my reservation right now. Um, but if you're going to code next Tuesday, have your lab provision and, and be ready for you. You know, at 6, you come in, sit down, start doing stuff at 8, and it's all ready to go. All right, the proof of concept is pretty much just an extension of the reservation-based model. And all this is is we have worked with special partners or set up special agreements, and they say 7 days is not going to cut it for me. I need an environment for two months. 
we don't allow that just from the web portal. We, uh, we allowed long reservations uh, some time back, and we found that people were making reservations and not using them. They're like, oh yeah, I'll take this lab and I'll use it for the next two months. And we found that they would get in there and they would hit it you know, for an hour here and an hour there, and by and large, it was unused. So for this proof of concept, if you need a long reservation, if you're going to do a product development or you have uh, you know, a series of testing that you want to do, you can engage with us uh, through the Sandbox forums and say, hey, I would like to do more an extended reservation proof of concept, and we can uh, work out an arrangement to give you an extended uh, duration reservation. We've done this with several large partners. We've had uh, some partners come in and actually do a full product development in our labs. They never ordered a piece of equipment themselves. They, re they reserved the lab for two months, they did their product development, they went to market, and it's all good. So that's what the proof of concept is. So again, the sort of the, the continuum is the always on, is, is quick, Reservation-based lab, this is where most people are going to fall. If you need something for an extended uh, period of time, proof of concept. So I just want to show you this real quick. I'll, I'll go into it more when we do the demo. This is sort of what a lab looks like once you bring it up. On the left-hand side, you're going to have, uh, this is called the instructions pane, just information about what's in the lab, anything specific about the lab you need to know. There's going to be a tab here called VPN access. It's going to give you detailed information uh, about how to set up your VPN connection. Um, then you're going to see your topology out here. So all the devices are going to have IPs associated with them once your, once your uh, lab is reserved. Uh, so after you make that VPN connection, I can go ping this guy. I can go bring up an SSH session. We'll get into all that in a, in a minute. But that's basically what uh, the portal view looks like. All right, just real quick, so the reservation access flow is the user is going to make a lab reservation. The clock is here because it may start now. It may start sometime in the future. Uh, the reservation begins. We go and provision it. All the automation is going to bring everything up. We send you email credentials or VPN credentials via email. You can uh, connect at any time after that, and then you have full access to the lab, pretty much as I had explained before. All right, just some quotes from uh, the extended Sandbox team. So the coolest part of Sandbox is that it enables possibilities. We provide the infrastructure, and you all provide the creativity. Uh, a collaboration developer can easily go and explore in an IoT lab. We're all wanting to sort of figure out what all these new technologies are that are coming out. They don't have to learn how to set up or configure anything. They can just go get their hands on the equipment. Where else can you get a fully configured Cisco Unified Call Manager cluster for free in under 30 minutes? And this one I like the best. You get access to high value equipment for free. You can be very creative and innovative without the fear of bricking production equipment. Heck, if you break something in the sandbox, you're probably doing it right. We have had people come in and configure a router or a switch or something and it's not coming back. That's okay. You have, to, you have to end your reservation. When your reservation ends, we're going to go and baseline everything that's in that lab or a VM's going to get torn down. If there's real equipment in there, we're going to re-baseline it. Just make another reservation and you will have it back in the pristine state again. So feel free to do dangerous things in there. Um, you're like, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, try it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and drive a demo real quick and show you... Uh, what it looks like in the sandbox. Okay, before we get there, so this is developer.cisco.com. This is the DevNet homepage. From here, you can just scroll down, and here's Sandbox, which will take you to the Sandbox portal. So this is, has a lot of really good information about uh, more details about Sandbox, uh, what you can do, some of what we offer. So I encourage you to go take a look at that. So from the, this front page here, just say get started with Sandbox. And this right here is the catalog view. So each one of these tiles represents a lab that you can get a hold of. 
the blue boxes underneath represent whether it's a reservation-based lab or an always-on lab. Now, you'll notice that this reservation-based lab says it contains a resource that's currently unavailable. This hardware lab has real hardware in it. We can't spin up multiple versions of it. Um, when we find that a lab is getting oversubscribed, we'll just make more versions of that lab. Like you'll see there's a bunch of APIC labs here. We've got a hardware lab, hardware lab, hardware, hardware, hardware. We found that APIC was really in demand, so we just built out more hardware labs. But anyway, if you see uh, this, that means there's only one instance of the lab. You can make a, a reservation for the future, but right now it's not available. If you're only interested in a certain technology, you're, you're a collaboration guy, you can go and hit collaboration, and it will filter all of the labs. and show you just our collaboration offerings. OK, so right now, uh, you can see up here, we have 44 labs available right now. I'm just going to scroll through, and they're color coded by technology. Now, what you do if you're interested in a lab, I had mentioned this hardware lab before. You just click on a lab, and it will bring up the topology view. And at this point, it's not active. You're just looking at and seeing what's in the lab. Um, so if you think this is interesting, you just hit the reserve button. And it will bring up a window, and you can schedule it. You can say, when do you want it to start from? Now is the default. I can do it by calendar. How long do you want it to be? Or you can say, by time. And then you just hit reserve. So that's how you get a lab. I have a lab already reserved. This happens to be one of our APIC hardware labs. So I have my APIC controller right here. And I've got real routers and switches out here. And, and a Linux server. So I have information over here about how I uh, might need to log in, uh, the VPN access. If you haven't used AnyConnect before or you need to download it, all the information about AnyConnect and making your VPN connection is, is over here. All right, so any of the, the systems that we spun up will have a green dot. These systems are just always up. And so, for an APIC lab, the typical use case is you're going to use this controller to go manage this sample network. So for APIC, this isn't true of all labs, is I will be doing my development and making API calls to my APIC controller here. So I'm going to sit down in front of my laptop, and I'm going to be writing my Python script or whatever language I choose, and I'm making API calls to 10.10.10.114 to talk to that APIC controller, and then I'm gaining knowledge or uh, managing this network. So this is how this is set up specifically for the developer. We could have just thrown an APIC controller up here, but we're like, no, they want to touch real hardware. They want to configure real hardware. All right, so if I have written a Python script and I have changed some sort of policy or made some configuration change by API calls here to manage this network, I'm probably going to if I'm a good engineer, I'm going to want to go make sure that actually took effect, right? Did I go and change the, the configurations over there? So you can go and mouse over any device. And between these two solid lines right here, we'll show you the connection methods we've enabled for any device. So this device right here, I can SSH into that device. And we're going to bring up an SSH session right in your browser. So you didn't have to fire up PuTTY or your client-side tool. We're going to give it to you right in the browser. So you can, you can SSH into any of these devices, go and check and see if your configuration changes made sense. You can also SSH into your APIC controller. And then the APIC controller also has a, a web portal. So I can choose HTTP.
And if you'll notice back over here, we provided uh, the credentials for your HTTP right here. So I can just go ahead and log in. So this right here is that machine in my lab, and now I'm at this, at this portal. So this is an example of how one of the labs work. Each technology in each lab is going to be a little bit different, um, but it sort of gives you an idea of how you can get your hands on the technology and try it out. So that's just the basics of, uh, of how this works. So that is the end of my demo real quick. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is Sandbox for Events. So we had the request, people who are using the Sandbox, this is great for me. I want to set up a, a learning session at my company, and I want everybody to have access to whatever technology it is. Um, and you know, if it's a couple of people, it's really easy for everybody to say, all right, we'll, we'll go spin something up. If, if they're making a request for 20 people, it's a little bit more challenging to say, all right, everybody go and, and reserve something. And if 20 people are reserving something simultaneously, everything sort of bogs down a little bit while everything comes up. So what we've done is we have come up with the ability to have you all engage with us and say, hey, I'm doing an event uh, the second and third of next month and I need 15 IOX labs. We'll get it set up um, so that we will pre-provision, we will pre-provision uh, labs for you so they're up and ready to go at the start of your event. I think I've already talked through most of this. So we're not doing this quite yet. This will be in the second quarter, just sometime probably to the end of March. Um, on, the, on our sandbox portal, there will be a, a, a way for, for you all to engage with us. All right, so the labs are pre-provisioned, and we validate them prior to the start of your event. And they're basically just sitting there waiting for you. So if you come in at 8 AM on Tuesday, um, all of the event attendees just need to follow a really quick, simple procedure uh, to go and gain access to a lab. So they have access to the lab for the duration of the event. There was no time waiting for something to spin up. Um, and you're ready to go with your hackathon, coding class, whatever it is. So we have done a couple of these sort of uh, uh, with some beta testers. Uh, Christian from Flextronic said, the Sandbox Lab helped us build amazing solutions focused on the development innovation and not setting up the infrastructure. We do the infrastructure, you guys do the development. Also, thanks to the effortless self-provision offered by the Sandbox team, we didn't have to worry about getting labs ready or sending account information to the participant. This allowed us to concentrate on all other details that made the event a success. So Christian and I had a quick conversation on the phone. Um, we got all the details down. When his event started, everything was ready. I had sent him a document that says, here's how you get your, your team to go and access these labs. They were up and running from the time they sat down and gave the instructions to the time people were in their labs. It was five minutes. So really quick and really easy. So if you're thinking about events or you're wanting to do a, a class or something like that, think about engaging with us in the sandbox and we'll get you set up. All right, so I'm kind of wrapping up here. I, I passed out cards, so there should be a card at every seat. So developer.cisco.com gets you to DevNet. Just tack on Sandbox at the end of that, get you to the Sandbox page. All right, if you're interested in learning more, we're actually going to have a workshop here in 30 minutes at 11 o'clock uh, at workbench number three. I think is just right out here. I'm not exactly where, where three is. So my colleague, Joe Kearns, is going to be going uh, a lot of the same stuff that I covered here. But if you're interested, um, you can actually sit down at the workbench and sort of drive along as he goes through his presentation. Um, he's going to be doing the same thing on Wednesday. Um, also, if you find kind of in the center here the DevNet 
uh, information booth. We have a very large uh, a demo right behind the, the information booth for Sandbox. So there's like four of us out there. We're just sitting around waiting to talk to people and, and you know, talk about how we can help you, you all out. We are the guys with the bike out there. Um, it'd be interesting for you all to come and just ask questions about what we did with the bike. It was sort of a, a proof of concept of if you sort of have a sort of a do-it-yourself sort of thing I want to build, we took something that was kind of kind of off in left field, um, and we said, well, let's, let's build a bike application. And so we're going through and we're, we're uh, through a Raspberry Pi. We're monitoring when you get on the bike, the speed and, the, and how far you've gone and that sort of thing. And at certain milestones along there, we're making API calls into the sandbox and playing videos and doing other fun stuff. So doing a, uh, a, a sort of a bike is something that nobody would ever build you, with Cisco technology. But we sort of want to get you all thinking about the things that you could do on your side integrating with sandbox technology um, to, to leverage all this great Cisco technology we're making available. So please come over and see us. Um, I guess there's some online evaluations. So if you all would uh, please. And I guess if you complete four session evaluations that you can get a Cisco Live t-shirt. That is the end of my presentation. Are there any questions I can answer for anybody? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I think the question was, and correct me if I'm wrong, so if you're wanting to monitor some of the devices or have something on your side more directly connect to devices in the lab. So through, we offer software VPN connection, just sort of self-serve, um, and we do allow backwards traffic. So you can go um, from the lab back to your, your environment. Um, we also have the ability to, we have a, a CVO router loaner program. So if you want a hardware router that has a direct tunnel into a lab, um, that's not something that we we do on a regular basis, but if that's what you need, we, we, we do do that. We have a certain number of routers, hardware routers, that we can loan out to you that gives you more direct access. So you can set up equipment on your side, interact with, with equipment in the sandbox. Did I answer your question? And if I didn't, st stop by. All right, any, any other questions? Right, okay, so the question was about uh, versioning. So we try to keep, uh, we, we try our best to keep the versions of the, the tools as close to current as possible. The collaboration labs that we have, we know that people have large installations or hey, I've got this version that, you know, in my environment. So for the collaborations, I believe we have uh, 10, 5, 11, and 11 something. So, so, yeah, so the question is, can I change the version in the lab? No. So if you choose a lab, whatever the, the software version is in that lab, it is fixed for that lab. But at least for the collaboration labs that we have, we offer three different, we're going to offer the current plus two behind for that particular one. Say again? Yes, you have to you have to pick it. You you won't be able to change the the version in your lab, but we do try to keep uh, most of the labs like APIC, ACI, whatever. We're trying to keep them as close to current as possible. Anything else?
It's very noisy. <laughs> Okay, so the, the question was, can you save your configuration uh, to install it on another, on another session? Okay, so one of the disadvantages that we have is you cannot save the state of a lab. Um, it is something that we have heard the request for. It's a very difficult uh, task, but not only that, it's difficult to, to procure that much storage. Because um, when people are storing you know, entire OVA images and it's a difficult nut. We haven't gotten there yet. We're, we're constantly looking at it, so it, it could potentially be in our future. But here's my answer and the way I've seen uh, other folks do it. So if you spend a lot of time configuring uh, a device, more often than not, you can save that configuration file locally. All of our labs have access to the internet. So if you can save your configuration, you can then throw it up onto the internet to your, uh, your Dropbox or your Google Drive or whatever it is. But, but the saving responsibilities on your side to, say, you know, to, to get that configuration file format, save it away so that you can pull it back down in and deploy it on your next reservation. Did I answer your question? OK. All right, anything else? OK, again, I really, oh. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, so the question was, is, uh, is there a way to make a request for, I like this particular lab, but I'd like to have it maybe do this. Um, that is something that we can certainly engage with you on. If the request is, is fairly contained, uh, we can enable that. If it is like, if it's gonna involve, you know, six man months of something to put something together, we're probably gonna say no, unless we're getting a lot of requests for it. Um, what I would do is I would uh, make a request on the Sandbox forums, uh, just say, hey, I'd really like to do whatever one of my team, it's, it's good, probably going to be me or the, the other guys out here, will uh, we'll get back with you and just understand your request a little bit more. Like I said, if it's, if it's something easy, um, we just need to throw a VM that we already have somewhere, we just need to throw it into a lab for you, we can certainly enable that. So the best, play, the best thing to do would be to engage with us on the forums. All right, again, thank you all for, for sitting through this and uh, again, making the time while the, the, the keynote was going on. I really appreciate it. And again, stop, stop down and uh, hop on the bicycle for a little while. It's kind of fun. Thank you all.